Right then, it's time to talk about Palestri. There are some rumours of him potentially going to uh, Sheffield United on loan. I think there's there's probably some benefit to him doing that. But I want to talk about whether or not he can replace Anthony because at the moment, I don't know if it's the case laying on Anthony's mind. Um, and, I, and I believe United have a duty to everyone to treat that in the exact same manner that they treated the Mason Greenwood one. Palestri isn't a name that's really getting thrown in the mix for United's best attacking options. Um, and he doesn't really seem to be getting a look in when, I'm going to be honest, Anthony's stinking the place out at the moment. And that's not really a reflection on Palestri as a, the player that we have here, uh, as he seems to put in a pretty decent account of himself every single time he features for United. Now, we signed him back in uh, October 2020 when there was an extension of the uh, transfer window because of COVID and all that sort of stuff. And in the same window, virtually the same day, we signed Ahmad Diallo. Um, we also brought in Cavani, Van der Beek and Tellez in that window. Uh, what a mixed bag that lot was, Christ. On reflection, <laughs> wasn't a great window. Um, a lot of those were extremely short-term buys. Cavani especially. I'm gutted that didn't work out. What a song. Um, with Diallo and Palestri clearly being gambles for the future, which is what I want United to try and do a lot more of. And I'd like to see us pursue that as an option. Alongside buying the £78 million players, your 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 million buys, just, just have a gamble because you never know what that turns into. And sometimes it turns into an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and sometimes it turns into an Angelo Enrique and it doesn't work. But it's cost you now to see. So I'm happy for us to to take these sorts of gambles um, and see what happens. Now, when we signed Palestri, I wasn't hot on him in the slightest. His highlights had mistakes in them. So you're like, right, there's just so little footage of this guy that we're having to just put him fucking losing the ball as part of his highlights package. Ugh. And at the time, I was like, I think Diallo's probably got a little bit more about him, but the pair of them are so inexperienced that I can't really give uh, a definitive answer on these at the moment. So we've had to really go and see Palestri on loan. He's had two separate loan spells where he went to Spanish outfit Alaves. So he's made 35 appearances in total with those, and in those loan spells, he himself said initially had success, but things didn't really go to plan overall. And sometimes poor loan spells don't necessarily reflect too bad on the young player. Um, there's a constant ever-changing group of circumstances in football, managers, tactics, fitness, all that sort of stuff can make or break a loan move. And Palestri seems to have been derailed by management decisions to just not play him. Um, and this happened with Diallo as well. Diallo went to Rangers, couldn't get a game, and you're like, well, that's that then, isn't it? But then goes to Sunderland, a harder place to go and play football as an attacking player in a harder league, and absolutely smashes it. Right. Doesn't make sense. Now, Palestri hasn't had a consistent run for United. We've seen cameos from him at best, and I'm still not 100% sure if he has the quality to be a consistent starter for Manchester United. He still has an opportunity to prove that he does have that, though. When you look at the attributes that he possesses, I think he is more than just your average winger. I think he's got a technicality about him that makes him seem certainly more suited to Spain, which is probably why the, the loan moves in Spain were selected for him. And when I contrast him to the likes of Anthony, Sancho, uh, Rashford, maybe even Diallo, Palestri seems way more comfortable using the wide areas to create rather than attempting to cut inside and shoot. When you look at all Manchester United's wingers, literally all of them, they all want to come inside. We don't have creators that are doing something different. Palestri does that. Palestri goes around the outside. Palestri is a throwback winger. Eh, Garnacho does it sometimes, but he's still looking to try and get on his right foot mostly when he's on the left. Palestri is happy to go down, turn and create for somebody. And as he's maturing, he seems to be doing it a lot more so at United than out on loan. And that ability to open up and receive a pass and then find somebody else in a... Because those... Wing, I don't know if you realise this, but when a winger comes inside to shoot like that, they're a very, very low percentage ball because quite often you've got three or four defenders in the way that you've got to try and shoot around. Um, they're often 18 to 20 yard out from goal. 
And they're certainly not the deadly kind of ball where if you can put a through ball in, in that golden area around the, the penalty spot where there's no defender in the way and it's just a one-touch finish to put it in the back of the net, there's, you know, you're talking 50% chance one of those goes in, whereas you're looking at maybe a 4% chance the cutting in and shoot goes in. So having a player that's got the ability to hit the byline, turn the corner and drop one back, uh, cutting it back to the edge of the D uh, in and around the penalty spot, that's a valuable asset. And I always like having different options. If all you've got is players that do the same shit, then how are you going to ever change a game if you need to? You need someone to come and do something different, whether that's through physicality, tempo, intensity, or just a skill set that nobody else possesses. And for me, Palestri does have this seeming desire to beat his man to create rather than to create himself the opportunity. He's got an extremely active first touch, which means he gets his head up, he identifies the next move as the ball's coming into him. And that speed of thought gives him the advantage on what he's going to do with his defender. He is obviously inexperienced and missing the game to game evidence that he can do this is probably why, you know, Ten Hag hasn't featured him just yet. But I think someone needs to take a gamble on him to find out if he can just do that. Now, the question I posed at the start of this is whether or not he can replace Anthony. And I think, of course, he can is the answer. Whether he will get the opportunity to do that is the, is the, is a bigger question. He's looked really bright in substitute appearances, but Ganacho's also looked incredible in substitute appearances and then given a start, he's misfired. The short stint that we saw against Wolves, I thought he looked active. I thought he contributed to our uh, lead and helping keep hold of the ball real nice. And I think Ten Hag seems to be trialling him just a little bit. Maybe it's a warning to Anthony. Maybe it's just getting him some match fitness to prove that he can go out on loan and go and feature for Sheffield United. Maybe the Sheffield United move is just a, a three-month loan to get him through till Christmas and perhaps we'll bring him back um, in January. But poor forward performances across the board, by the way. That is, you know, there isn't a single forward player in United at the moment that you go, well, yeah, he's actually in good form. Hoyland coming into a position that's going to require service. Palestri has got an opportunity here to make that right wing spot his for the foreseeable future. So what next? Well, obviously the rumours are floating around that he's going to have a stint on loan and they feel strong to me. Him stepping up and going out on loan or sticking around the team and forcing his way into the eleven is a crucial decision. And I don't know the right answer because I don't know the circumstances that are going to unfold over the next 12 months. I don't think it's worth sending him on loan out to Spain. The football is at a different speed. I think the football is at a different mentality. And I don't think it prepares you necessarily for playing in the Premier League as a Premier League loanee. If Sheffield United take him, I think he's got an opportunity to impress in the Premier League, but I think Sheffield United are so bad. The forward player on loan from Manchester United will be the first one sacrificed as they look to go 4-5-1 and try and protect nil nils at all cost but if he goes there and he does well he could really put a bit of a conundrum in i wouldn't mind seeing him feature somehow even if it was for a good stint like 30 minutes this weekend against forest i think if he could do that allow ten Hag to maybe make a final decision on him before sending him on loan or actually going now nah, do you know what i am going to put pressure on anthony with this kid and we'll see what happens let me know your thoughts in the comments. What would you do? I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news, as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.